Liberal media sycophants are getting another thrill up their legs. The pundits are falling madly in love with the Harris Walls ticket. It was mesmerizing. She was John Wayne last night. She was a leader. Wow. A leader, and she was clear that she was the yeah. boss. She is running a flawless campaign, and this choice, um, even eight hours ago, I think wasn't as obvious as it is now. Maybe a little more of a cuddly choice. He seems to almost um, have a twinkle in his eye. Somebody who uh, I bet knows how to make a good hot dish casserole in Minnesota. Kind of a folksy guy, very friendly, nice guy. He ice fishes, he's a hunter, he does uh, butter car. You're not going to be able to pull uh, Governor Waltz to the left or to the right. Governor Waltz is uh, right down the middle of America. And we just got a brand new clip from Joe Biden. Remember him? Hyping Trump fear mongering. Are you confident that there will be a peaceful transfer of power in January 2025? If Trump wins, no, I'm not confident at all. I mean, if Trump loses, I'm not confident at all. He means what he says. We don't take him seriously. He means it. All the stuff about if we lose, there'll be a bloodbath. Well, I, instead, I'm going to start with this, Jesse. All yeah. of the media is now so impressed that thousands are attending a rally, that Trump's, uh, even though Trump's been doing it for years, suddenly these two are amazing. It's wonderful. They're full of joy and happiness and the future. Had they been blind to what Trump's been doing for like seven years? I'd like to congratulate the Democrats. Finally, someone went to their rallies. It's only been eight years since someone showed up. Good for you. There are 80 million Democrats in this country. You'd think they could get a couple thousand in Philly or in a city. Good for you. Now you know what it's like to actually have a real campaign. The, me the way the media is talking about this, they're acting like they're talking about a movie that hasn't even come out yet. Folksy, charming. You didn't even know this guy until 24 hours ago. Yeah. You've never heard of him. You've never interviewed him. All of a sudden, you know everything about him. Judge, when they say folksy, this is the people in D.C. and New York. They think he's a hick who can trick other hicks into voting for Democrats. But he really wants to castrate your five-year-old. When they say he's middle of the road, he even said himself he's progressive. You know who just endorsed him? The Socialists of America, oh. a glowing endorsement. So this is just another hoax waltz, and the media is just going to protect and elect this guy, and they're juicing the polls. I just found out this country identifies R plus two, and all the polls we've been seeing with Kamala doing so well, their samples, R plus seven, R plus eight, R plus four. These are fake polls. Trump's going to kill her. Well, we'll see. But, you know, they say that no one uh, will be able, uh, Jillian, no one will be able to out small town Tim Walls. Really? I mean, J.D. Vance is from a small town in Ohio and Appalachia. I mean, why is, why is Waltz a rural success story, but J.D. Vance is just weird? I think the bigger challenge for Waltz is going to be the latest polling uh, that came out last week when he was in the mix, but nobody really thought he was going to be the pick, which showed nine out of 10 Americans who were polled said they didn't know enough about him to have an opinion about him. I think that's a serious problem when you're coupled with a candidate who the vice president has some public profile, but has not had a particularly outsized impact on things during the Biden administration. So it's not really a, 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 a when you couple that with someone literally nobody has ever heard of before, that's quite a challenge to overcome. I will also flag, this was interesting, over the weekend, David Axelrod said some of the excitement and the euphoria we're seeing on behalf of Democrats in response to this ticket now is, he, he described it as kind of like a post-trauma response where people are so relieved to not have to feel like a pit of dread in the, a pit, uh, what is it, a pit of dread? A pit of dread pit of in your stomach, like when thinking, dealing with the doldrums of having a Biden reelection ticket, mm -hmm. pass them by. Now they're they're so relieved by that that they're feeling euphoric. He warned it's going to kind of die out quicker than most people anticipate. To me, that's the challenge I see for the ticket. You know, some on the left, Jessica, thought that picking walls would help them uh, with the rural vote. 
and that when you look at the last election when he ran, when Joe Biden ran, uh, Waltz didn't really bring in, he didn't bring in the rural votes. Well, he brought in enough votes to win by seven points, and but that he, was he, after. No, well, he didn't. Oh, he did not outperform Biden the way that other people who were be con, being considered for this right. role did, like Andy Bashir or Josh Shapiro, really stood in, out in that way, and Mark Kelly by a couple of points more, but certainly closer. So that was something that they thought of. I've read reporting that said that there was internal polling by the Harris campaign that showed that Josh Shapiro wasn't that wouldn't create that much of a demonstrable difference in terms of them winning it versus walls on the ticket, which made them feel safer about going with it. But to Jillian's point that she made in the last segment, which does feel like 9,000 years ago, uh, she went with her gut. She went with the person who also told her to her face, I'm not trying to be president. I'm trying to be your vice president. Mm. And I think that that really resonated with her and that she felt safe with him, that he was going to be a supportive partner. Aww. and that. Like a safe Aww. space, like a security blanket. Aww. Like that's cute. Okay, well, JD Vance. Oh, you is... sweet little Waltz. <laughs> you love you. You make me feel so don't just safe. Just keep going, don't Jesse. Don't just, me. I, I you think. Don't outshine me. Yeah. No, I. But I think that this effort to make him out to be some sort of radical demon is not going to be effective because if you listen to him for two minutes, you know that this person isn't a radical. This is someone who's. Students that and football players that he coached were the staffers for his first campaign. It's someone who he doesn't. The financial reports came out today. He doesn't own a single stock, mutual fund, I mean, that's or bond. Crazy. Oh, okay. so he's never invested in America. In America, that's right. Are, Let me just invest in America to I, to, I want to go to Greg. He's never invested Greg. in America. Yeah. Greg. Yeah, you know, I love that uh, he uh, he. I guess he told Kamala, you know, look, I'm not going after your job like the last vice president. <laughs> um, you know, um, Chris Matthews, what he said, uh, is like yeah. John Wayne Gacy. Was that what he no, said? John Wayne. John Wayne. No, I thought it was John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> John Wayne. I think he meant to say John Wayne Gacy. I, I get a weird vibe off uh, Waltz. I feel like he's the husband of a missing spouse in a Dateline special. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's the Is he a suspect? The beloved high school coach who <laughs> held mandatory showers before practice. He just has a weird vibe. Uh, the key here is brainwash, right? Yep. They're like all of a sudden. The left loves things that they mocked months ago. The rural vote. Since when do Democrats love the rural vote? Aren't those a bunch of hicks and pickup trucks with yep, the red, red hats? hats? Now all of a sudden they care. They care about white males, the military, the Second Amendment. And all of a sudden the things that they usually reject Criminal justice, social justice, sanctuary cities, free health benefits, left-wing protests. All that stuff takes a back seat to folksy, rural, Midwestern white guy. <laughs> and we're all supposed to go, oh, yeah, he's great. Just like Joe Biden was going to be the voice of moderation when you guys put that jackass in front of us. Look, the middle of the road here is the road to ruin. And we know that. We don't have to listen to him for two minutes. All we have to do is look at his history. Exactly. All you have to look at is 2020. What he did in Minneapolis, how he viewed the, the, the riots, how he said it was exciting, how he said it was a moment of optimism, how his wife said she liked the smell of burning tires. Yeah. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> so sorry, you know what? Just because you just because he's an old bald white guy, that doesn't offer any 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 comfort to me. John Wayne Gacy, he you know, pick him as a babysitter because he doesn't look like a hippie. Yeah. That's the logic you're using. All right. Do you believe I had Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.